okay uh, bismillah rahman rahim so we are uh, studying uh, the course that is data communication in computer networks okay so we were uh, discussing uh, chapter number 2 application layer so let me remind to you that in the last class we had studied uh, chapter number 2 and we studied generally the application layer functionalities how the network application are developed and how they are identified and how, what are its architecture for example it can be a client server model or it can be a peer to peer model uh, the interaction between two applications the application that is developed by using sockets okay and when we develop an application layer protocol so it is necessary to specify the transport layer services so we discuss what are the transport layer services available in the current internet then we started web and http protocol the how to access website by using http protocol so http protocol is an application layer protocol that is used for a web access in present and practice so we are discussing http protocol as an example that how the application layer protocol is designed how they interact what is specified and how how the content the syntax semantic they are specified okay so in today's class we will also continue the uh, chapter number 2 application layer protocols so this is the topic uh, in this today class i would like to an, again explain through an example the difference between persistence and non persistent http though i have explained persistent and non persistence http working uh, but i would like to explain it through an exam uh, through another example so that it is clear to you that which one is better and how then we will discuss http response message what is its syntax what is its semantics okay we will also discuss http cookies and http web cache so these are the topics that we will uh, we will cover in today's lecture okay and these are from the top down approach computer networking 7th edition okay so let's discuss so as we have discussed that in the http protocol the connection is two type one is called non persistence and one is called persistent http in non persistence http protocol each object is accessed over a single tcp connection that is when a user want to access an http object first the tcp connection is established between client and server after establishing connection the tcp connect the tcp connection between client and server the http object the http request is sent from client to server and the server respond with the http object after retrieving the object the tcp connection is closed if the client wants to access another http object then the client has to again establish a tcp connection this is called non persistent http and in persistent http multiple objects are retrieved over a single tcp connection between client and server so i am going to again explain the difference between non persistent http and persistent http through another example figure okay so in non persistent http how it works when the user wants to access an an object an http object so the http object it is specified by using url this is how okay so in this url 
the first part is the HTTP host, the machine, the IP address of the machine where the object is stored. And the second part of the URL is the path on that machine, on that system where the object is located. So first, the client will establish TCP connection between uh, with the server. So a TCP connection is established between client and server. So it requires one RTT. We have already discussed in previous class. After the connection is established, then the HTTP request message is sent from the client and the server responds with the HTTP response. Okay, the, with the HTTP object. When the HTTP object is retrieved, after this the connection is closed. Okay, after this the connection is closed, like you can see. When the object is retrieved, the object the connection is closed if the client wants to access another object so it has to repeat again step one to five okay so it can be explained like this way this is an example for example the client want to access an object two objects so first it has to establish a tcp connection this will requires one rtt a round trip time round trip time is what it is the time that is taken by sending the by initiating the tcp connection from the client and the tcp response connection uh, uh, establishment is received by the client from the server this is time from time from here to here this is called one rtt so one rtt is required for tcp connection establishment after the TCP connection is established, then the client sends the HTTP request. And here the server sends the HTTP response. And this break, this is the object transmission time because the object may be 10 GB, 15 GB. So that object cannot be sent in one message. Or, so it will take some time. When the object is retrieved, after this the connection is closed. If the user wants to access another object, then it has to again establish TCP connection and then uh, after establishing the connection, the HTTP request message is sent and the HTTP response is received. After receiving the object, the connection is again closed. The TCP connection is closed. This is the working of non-persistence HTTP. Okay. So how much time it will require to retrieve an object? So to retrieve one object, it requires one RTT for TCP connection establishment and one RTT for the HTTP request and response and some transmission time for the object transmission. Okay, so if one, if another object, so the same time, same steps are repeated. Okay, so it means that how much time is required to retrieve n number of objects. So for one object, it requires two RTT plus transmission time of the object. This is called for this is for one object. If if the user wants to access, client wants to access n objects, so n multiplied by this time. For example, if the uh, client wants to access two objects, so two multiplied by this, this is the time four RTT plus two transmission time. Okay. So now what is uh, so we have already explained this non persistent http now what is persistent http again i would like to explain it through another figure through an, another example okay suppose the user wants to access an object so the user will establish connection the tcp connection the client from client to server okay so it will requires one rtt and then the H, the client will send the client sends the HTTP request and the server respond with the HTTP response. Okay, so it requires one RTT again, another RTT, and the transmission time of the object, the file. So it means that if one object is to be retrieved, the first object, so it will requires two RTT, one RTT for TCP connection establishment and one RTT for HTTP request and response. And transmission time, this is this transmission time that is required to send a large object. But if the user wants, but after retrieving the object, the connection is not closed. The connection is maintained in persistent HTTP. 
and persistent HTTP the connection is maintained okay so if the client wants to access another object so it doesn't have to again establish connection because already connection is established so the HTTP request is directly sent so for the second object or for the subsequent object only the one RTT is required to send the HTTP request and response why because the connection is already opened already open, established so it is not closed or oh, it is open so another object request can be sent so for the subsequent objects it only requires one RTT for request HTTP request and HTTP response and transmission time okay so you can see that for example if the user want to access the first object so it has it requires two RTT plus transmission time but if the user wants to access second object so it will require one RTT one RTT and n minus one so this formula is wrong okay let me correct it okay let me correct it again it will be uh, I think then okay so this formula is like this way RTT plus transmission time into n minus 1 n minus 1 okay so okay so you can see that for the subsequent object it requires n minus 1 into rtt single rtt plus transmission time why single rtt because the connection is already established and it only requires one rtt to send the http request and to receive the http response so for n objects for the first object it will require this time and for the subsequent n minus one object it will require this time so this time is less as compared to the non-persistent http okay for example in this case if uh, the user wants so it it, it is like uh, for example if the user wants to access two objects how many objects two objects okay so it requires three rtt why two rtt for the first object and one rtt for the second object and two transmission time so the, here that for receiving the two objects in persistent http the total time required is three rtt plus two multiplied by transmission time but in the case of non-persistence in the case of non-persistence it requires four rtt it requires 4 RTT. So it means that non persistent in the persistent HTTP, the delay to retrieve multiple object it will be less. It will be less. Okay. So non persistence in the non persistent HTTP. Okay. In the non persistence HTTP, uh, uh, two RTT is required per object. But in the persistent HTTP one RTT is required per subsequent objects per subsequent HTTP one RTT is required for the first object two RTT is required but for the subsequent HTTP objects only one RTT is required okay so but however okay uh, so there is also operating system overhead for each TCP connection for example if the user wants to access multiple objects like 10 objects 20 objects so for each the client has to establish the TCP connection so there is overhead on operating system so normally the browser often opens parallel TCP connection to fetch multiple objects for example the user wants to access 10 objects so it can it has uh, at same time so it may establish 10 TCP connections but in persistent HTTP, only one connection is established, and after the for the first object, and the after retrieving the object, the connection is leave open. It doesn't close, and the subsequent HTTP request, request and response they are sent on the same open connection or the same open connection, TCP connection. Okay. So in this case, it requires one RTT for all the reference objects. 
okay uh, and two at a t uh, two at a t for the first object and for the subsequent uh, uh, object it requires one at a t but in the non persistence two at a t is required for each object okay so however the disadvantage of persistent http is that for example the connection when the object is retrieved the connection is open so when the connection is open so the operating system has to uh, uh, allocate the process so th there is the operating system overhead also involved okay as we have explained the syntax and semantic of http request message like for example this one okay now we are going to explain the the uh, we are going to explain the syntax and semantic of http response message and the http response message the first header line this is called http response line it is mandatory for example as i have explained that in the http request message the first header line is mandatory and it should be the first header line like this way and these other header lines they can be in any address they may be needed or may not be needed okay but and similarly in the http response message this first header line is mandatory and this first header line it contains the protocol version that is supported supported by the server for example in this case you can see http 1.1 that is the server is supporting http 1.1 protocol okay then space then 200 200 is the code for response it shows what is the response for example 200 okay means that the request sent by the client is understood by server that is the server can understand the request of http client and the 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 server also can fulfill the request of http client for example the client requested for an object to access an object so the object is present with the http server and the server has responded has sent the http object so this is the explanation of code and these code they are defined in the http rfc rfc these status code are defined okay so this status code and okay is the short description for this code and it is also defined in the http rfc there are many others status code response status okay so this code is used by the client to interpret the response that what is the response whether the server was correct the server has the object server doesn't have the object okay whether the user is allowed whether the user is not allowed all these information they are interpreted by this status code and this status code they are defined in the http rfc and this is the short description it is also defined in the http rfc okay for example there are other st status code like this way 200 means the request is succeeded what does it mean that the client sent a request the server can understand the request the server can support the uh, protocol that version that is used by the client and the server has the object also the requested object was present with the server and the server is responding with the object the server is sending the object and the request object later in the message and the request object is sent in the message if the status code is 301 it means that the server understood the message of the client but the specified object is not present with the uh, on the current directory it is moved to another location it is moved to another location so requested object is moved to a new location that is specified in the message sometime when you access some uh, objects so you send a redirect message okay 
400 if the status code is 400 bad request what does it mean that the server didn't understand the request message there is something missing or the request syntax and semantic is wrong syntax or semantic is wrong it is not or the protocol version is not supported and for example 505 means protocol version. here means protocol version is supported but the the syntax and semantic is something wrong it is not as per RFC. Please consult. Okay. For example, sometimes you send the message to someone. He say, okay, I don't know well, what does it mean. So maybe the syntax or semantic is wrong. Okay. Second is 404. It means that the requested object is understood. In this 404, in 301, and 200, it means that the message is understood by the server. Okay, the request is understood by the server, but the required object is not found on that location. Here means that the object was present on that location previously, but now it is moved to another location. So the client should access the object from another location. Here it means that the object is not present with this on that path with the server. Okay, so it means that the object is not present on that part. So it means that this is mean by 404 code. And this will be the short message not found. Instead of okay, instead of here okay, with the 404 it will be not found. Okay. Similarly, 505 error means that the HTTP version is not supported. For example, the HTTP version, the, the um, for example, the client is using the HTTP 2.2 version. And the server is using 1.1 so the server cannot understand the 2.1 if the server if the client is using 1.1 and the server is using 2.1 then, then the server can understand the previous version the lower version okay so the because the lower version are compatible the higher version are backward compatible okay so these are some status code that can be present in the HTTP response okay so this in the HTTP response this first header line it is mandatory the second means connection close that the object is sent and now the server will want to close the connection it means that it is persistent non-persistent HTTP this is the time when this when the server initiate the response this is the time on the server this is the uh, I, I guess uh, Thursday this date and so on okay and this is the time exact time we will let her use this time what does it mean why it is it has some use we will discuss it okay so we will discuss it in the conditional git server okay this is the information about server that the server is running Apache and unix operating system in apache 1.3 version and the object is modified on on june 29th so it is last modified on the server on this date it has special use we will discuss it okay and the object its length is this byte okay and the object is type of text html file after these header lines are specified then two header lines two uh, 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 then there is a one blank line and after the blank line there is the response object the object present in the response okay so this is the status code that is already explained okay now <coughs> this is the if you want to practice the http uh, request and response message so you can use telnet okay but before using the telnet please enable the telnet application on your machine because often this is disabled often this is disabled so make it sure that it is enabled okay after this you can try this exercise by yourself if you have any problem please uh, consult me I shall uh, 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 I will provide you guidance but there is only thing that first enable the telnet okay if it is enabled then you can you can access it okay 
Now we have discussed that HTTP is a stateless protocol. What does it mean? So I have explained to you that status mean that whenever you request for an object to to the HTTP server, the HTTP server will respond to you. The, for example, if you uh, request for an object 1000 time, the HTTP server will respond to you 1000 time. It will not ask you the client that you have accessed this object previously, why you need it again okay so this means stateless so we don't maintain stateless information okay however we maintain some state information and what is maintained for example in cookies okay so first what is the cookies and what is its use let me explain it through an example then we will explain it okay so what is cookies and how it is used so first let me explain it then we can discuss it okay Suppose this is a client and it wants to access a server. The server is suppose Amazon. Okay. So when the client access the server, okay, for example, this is Amazon server. So the server first gets that identify that this is the first user. This is the user that has arrived on amazon server for the first time this is a new user or it is all or it is a uh, old user that that this user has already come on has visited amazon so it is confirmed so it is confirmed by database okay suppose this is the first time user so if it is the first time user so the amazon first creates an id for this user in its database okay and how the user is identified so the user may be identified based on ip address or username or something else okay application id uh, and so on so suppose the user is this is a new user okay and the amazon server it creates an id in its that and store in it in the its database that this is the user and its id is 1678 so it is stored this id is called cookie id okay now after storing this the server process the message and server sends the response for example, if the user has requested for an object, so the server will provide that object, will transmit that object. Okay. But in the HTTP response message, whatever is the response for this request, the, HT, the server will send a special header line. And this special header line is called set cookie. And its value will be the ID that is created by the Amazon server in its database for this user. For example, in this case, for this user, the Amazon server has created the ID 1678. So this ID will be put here and it is the response is sent. When the client receives the, the response and then the response contain header line set cookie 1678. So it's stored in its database. Therefore, Amazon, my cookie ID is 1678. You can already show that in the client there is a ID, cookie ID for eBay server. So for each server, there is a cookie ID in the client side. So if the client side received in the response message a set cookie, then that information is stored in its own database. Okay, so it means that the client also have a database and the server also have a database. This server database, it has the maintain the information from the server point of view about the client. And this database, it maintains the server and its cookie ID information at the client. For example, the, for Amazon, the cookie ID was 1678, one, so it is stored in its the client database. So what does it mean? It means that <coughs> whenever the user access the client access Amazon, so in the client access Amazon server, 
then in the HTTP request it will send the cookie ID that Amazon has already given me a cookie ID 1678 so when this is arrived on server so the server can understand that this is my old user and this is his ID so whatever object whatever are the activities whatever object are accessed by this client all its information profile is maintained in its database all information is maintained in database okay so and then the user sent the uh, uh, response okay but the uh, the server sent the response to client for this request but however the server maintains all the information whatever object are accessed at this server by this client so all the information they are maintained here in the database of the server so it means that server knows each and everything about the client okay so the client is accessing which kind of objects at the amazon server for example if this client is user josefa josefa is accessing amazon and it is accessing the networking box okay so all the information will be maintained here that the, uh, the Josefa is accessing uh, uh, the networking one book networking two book networking three and four five six and at which time all these information are maintained so one week later later for example what is its use one week later again this client access Josefa access so it will send the one six seven eight so by having this cookie ID the server can understand that this is the old user okay so it updates its database that what object he is accessing the Josefa is accessing the client is accessing but it sends the HTTP response so it means that what does it mean how, how it is used okay how it is used so it is used why what is the its use it is used for authorization it is used for authorization you may know that whenever you access an a website from a new location okay it send you the oh this is your user or, or someone else who is accessing the your object okay for example if you access the gmail from Kamsetswa, Kamsetswa, and sometime a user want to access it from America. So it, the server will respond to you, okay, you are always accessing from the walk-in and now someone else is accessing from the America. Is it an intruder or something else? Okay, so this is used for this purpose as well. It is also used for shopping carts. For example, if you are buying a book on Amazon, and you networking book top down approach so you and you have visited so many books on the amazon website so when you want to pay uh, you want to make a payment okay so on that at that point all the objects that you have visited all appear in the shopping cart okay so how this is maintained because the server is maintaining your history that which object you have accessed so all those objects appear here and then give you a suggestion that which object you want to buy so it make it easy for you to make shopping carts similarly it provides you recommendation for example when Josefa is accessing the networking books and a new networking book has been published suppose the book is software defined networks a new book is published okay so the when you access amazon.com it will give you a suggestion a recommendation that a new book has arrived networking book is arrived because you are always accessing networking book so a new networking book is published so all these recommendations based based on your previous history your interest okay similarly the user session uh, state is maintained by web email so how the, uh, uh, the how to keep state the protocol endpoints maintain state at sender and receiver or multiple transaction that we have explained that both client and server it maintain the state information 
the client maintains this state information and the server maintains this state information okay okay before discussing disadvantage let me uh, explain it uh, uh, the cookie overview okay so user server state client server state it is maintained by using cookies so many website they use cookies okay but nowadays when they use the cookies so they some website they get your consent that whether you want to accept or not if you want to accept then they will maintain your status information state information if you don't want to accept so they don't maintain the status but it is up to that server so a cookie it has four components the cookie header line that is you know in the response message this is the first component set cookie the header lines and the http response okay and the cookie and the http request header line the database at the client side and the database at the server side so these are the four components okay so the four components are cookie header line set cookie head uh, and the response message cookie header line and the request message cookie the cookie file that is kept on the user side database and the web backend database at the server side okay so in this is the working that we have already explained okay now what are the disadvantages of cookie the disadvantage of the cookie is uh, privacy the cookies permit size to learn a lot about you okay so you and another is you may supply name and email to sites okay what does it mean for example if the server it identify a user from ip address okay so if you are accessing the amazon from comset university so you are accessing amazon from the comset's ip so it will identify you as a user from comset's and if the you are accessing amazon from your home so you are accessing the amazon from home it means that there is another ip address so it will amazon will understand you as a another user okay so to solve this problem so you can provide username and password on a server so if you are accessing from the client uh, from the comset or you are accessing from the home the amazon dot server so you have to provide username and password from username and password it can understand your user id so it can it can provide your status information so this is more secure version okay so okay so we have discussed the web uh, uh, http cookies in detail so in the next video we are going to discuss web cache and proxy servers okay